It turns out that the Doppler effect for light waves is the key to the cosmos. The evidence for this was gathered unexpectedly by a former mule team driver who never went beyond the eighth grade. During the second decade of this century, the world's largest telescope was being assembled on Mount Wilson, overlooking what were then the clear skies of Los Angeles. Large pieces of the telescope had to be hauled to the top of the mountain, a job for mule teams. One of the drivers was a young man named Milton Hummison, the ne'er-do-well son of a California banker. But he was bright and naturally curious about the equipment he had carted up Mount Wilson, and after the telescope was completed in 1917, he managed to stay on here as janitor and electrician. One evening, so the story goes, the observatory's night assistant was ill and Hummison was asked to fill in. Hummison was a gambling man, celebrated for his skill at poker and at the pool table, but his touch with the telescope was admired even more. He discovered he had a natural talent for using astronomical instruments. He became the virtuoso of the 100-inch telescope. In this instrument, the light from distant galaxies is focused on a glass photographic plate by a great encased mirror 100 inches across. By the late 1920s, Hummison was making observations himself. Mr. Nelson? Hummison, by now, had his own night assistant to help him with the observations. Afternoon, Mr. Nelson. Good afternoon, Mr. Hummison. We'll start at six. I'll be making a spectrogram at the Casa Grain Focus. Yes, sir. The telescope must be able to point with high accuracy to a designated region of the sky and to keep on pointing there. A machine weighing about 75 tons, as massive as a locomotive, must move with a precision greater than that of the finest pocket watch. Everything must be checked thoroughly. The electrical power system must work flawlessly. Hours before observations are to begin, the dome is opened to allow the temperature inside and outside to be equalized. Thomason prepared the sensitive photographic emulsions sheathed in their metal holders to capture with the giant telescope the faint light from remote galaxies. This was part of a systematic program which Hummison and his mentor, the astronomer Edwin Hubble, were pursuing to measure the Doppler shift of the light from the most distant galaxies then known. But the most distant galaxies are very faint. That's why, even with the largest telescope in the world, it was necessary to take very long time exposures, often lasting the whole night, and sometimes requiring several successive nights. Thomason would give the night assistant the celestial coordinates of the target galaxy. Through the long, cold night, he would have to make fine adjustments so the telescope would precisely track the target galaxy. The galaxy itself was much too faint to see through the great telescope, although it could be recorded photographically with a long time exposure. So the telescope would be pointed at a nearby bright star and then offset to a featureless patch of sky from which, over the long night, the light from the unseen galaxy would slowly accumulate. The telescope focused the faint white light from the galaxy into the spectrometer, where it was spread out into its rainbow of constituent colors. The spectrum would be recorded on the little glass plates. All right, would you clap in the drive and salute the focus star, please? Are you clear? 
I'm going to salute to the east. Yes, I think I'm clear. Just take it easy. All right, I have it. Now let's go to NGC 7619. I'm clear. Going to do a 10 hour exposure. What time is it? Uh, 7.15. All right, lights out, please. Dark slide is open. A large telescope views only a tiny patch of sky. As the Earth turns, a guide star or a galaxy would drift out of the telescope's field of view in only a few minutes. Hummison had to stay awake, tracking the galaxy while elaborate machinery moved the telescope slowly in the opposite direction to compensate for the Earth's rotation. The telescope is a kind of clock. You're clear. This work was difficult, routine, tedious. But although they didn't yet know it, Hubble and Hummison were meticulously accumulating the evidence for the Big Bang. They had found that the more distant the galaxy, the more its spectrum of colors was shifted to the red. Clear the telescope. I'm coming down now. If this redshift were due to the Doppler effect, the distant galaxies must be running away from us. At the end of his vigil, Hummison would retrieve the tiny galactic spectrum and carefully carry it down to be developed. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. I'm going to the dark room now. Good day. Good day, sir. Hummison found a redshift in almost every galaxy he examined, like the Doppler shift in the sound of a receding locomotive. And the farther away from us they were, the faster they were receding. Tied to the fabric of space, the outward rushing galaxies were tracing the expansion of the universe itself. An awesome conclusion had been captured on these tiny glass slides. Hummison and Hubble had discovered the Big Bang. At top and bottom are calibration lines that Hummison had earlier photographed. In the middle, is the spectrum of a relatively nearby galaxy. Every element has a characteristic spectral fingerprint, a set of frequencies where light is absorbed. Prominent here are two dark lines in the violet due to calcium in the atmospheres of the hundreds of billions of stars that constitute this galaxy. Nearby galaxies show very little Doppler shift. But when he recorded the spectrum of a fainter and more distant galaxy, he found the same telltale pair of lines, but shifted farther right toward the red. And when he examined a remote galaxy four billion light years away, he found that the lines were red shifted even more. This galaxy must be receding at 200 million kilometers an hour. The painstaking observations of Milton Hummison, astronomer and former mule team driver, established the expansion of the universe.